Delving. What the heck is delving? What does this button do? Whoa! So I imagine a lot of you guys are probably either not understanding what's actually going in here, or confused by it, or scared of it, or think it's very tedious. Uh, the underworld can be pretty daunting, but ultimately delves are a pretty important part of the game. So I figured I would make a video specifically talking through what are delves, how do you do delves, what are all the mechanics going on in delves. There's a lot of very confusing looking screens, there's all this stuff, there's talking about faction rewards and renown rewards and horde levels, and then there's horde levels giving stat bonuses, and then there's qualities of chests and all this other crazy stuff. There's portals, like what the heck's going on in here. So this video is supposed to basically give you an overview of what delves are, how to delve efficiently, how to level up your delves in an appropriate way, why you would even want to do delves. Uh, this is that video. So let us begin by observing what a delve actually is. So when you first get access to a delve, uh, this like this new one for instance, you'll have an opportunity to unlock it just like you do any other kingdom. So we jump in here and we purchase it, you'll get a new banner, and it'll tell you how many of the overall delves that you actually have access to. So right away you're getting at least a banner just by unlocking it, so at a minimum you should do that. But then once we go into it, now there's quests that you need to complete in order to unlock the delve. So first thing you want to do is go in here and complete those quests. All right, so we completed the quests. Now what do we do? Well, we, now we have access to all this other fun stuff. So delving is the main area where you're going to actually do the delves. And what that means is, is that you'll be able to pick a starting level. Uh, when you first start, it'll be level 20. And then you can actually go through and do the fights. At the end of it, you can get rewards. You get a chest, which has all kinds of fun goodies in it. Primarily, you're doing this for ingots, however. So legendary ingots and mythic ingots both drop in high quantities in here. You usually get a good amount of glory. And you also get these things called chaos shards. So what the chaos shards are all about is opening up these portals to actually get the troops for that specific delve. So there's actually a bunch of troops that are only available within each of these respective kingdoms in the underworld. So when you're going into a delve, really your primary goal, if nothing else, is to make sure that you're going into the portals and actually getting all of the fun troops. There's generally four. I believe there's always four. There's one of each rarity type. They all kind of work together in some kind of weird synergistic way, but the only way you can open these is by getting these chaos shards. And again, you get these chaos shards by doing the delves, and you just happen to be getting mythic ingots and legendary ingots as you go through. So before you jump into your delves, however, this horde section is extremely important. So what this horde section is all about is leveling up this specific kingdom in quality levels and what those quality levels do is increase the amount of rewards you get at the end. So what this is telling you is that you could be getting gold rewards, souls rewards, ingots, and glory, and then of course there's also chaos shards. And for each one of these that you level up, you can see that the amount of rewards you're going to get increases. So obviously before you start a delve, the most important thing you could do is get this horde level up as high as you can, so that way the rewards you're getting are as high as they possibly can. At the end of the entire thing, uh, there's a final boss fight, and in that boss fight you get this delve chest, and that delve chest is the thing that contains all the fun goodies. So if at all possible, you want to level up your delve as high as you can. So the way that we do that is in this upgrade menu. You can also see that as you increase your horde level, you're also getting stats. So the higher you can increase your horde level, the easier the delve will be for you as well. This can go insanely high. I don't know if it even has an end, but you can get this insanely high. So increasing your horde level is great because the rewards you get will be better, the stats of your troops will be better, and the rewards are going to be great. So this is the menu that you get, and as you can see, it's asking you to donate treasure into this horde, and then that will give you an opportunity to increase your quality level. So if I add in just one of these, it's telling you that this sacred treasure, for instance, is giving me plus 50% chance to increase this quality level. You can see it's saying it right here. And then it's also saying that my horde level will go up this much as well. And then if I add another treasure, it adds that percent, and now it's up to 80. And then if I added like this treasure, for instance, it goes up to 100. I'm guaranteed to get this quality level. So where you get these treasures is again inside these portals. So as you're opening up portals to try and get your troops, you'll be able to get chaos shards, and then the chaos shards will potentially allow you to get treasures as well as the troops in here. So before you start a delve, ideally, you would be leveling this thing up all the way to 10. So now we're going to cover 
what is the best way to get this to level 10? What is the most efficient use of resources to get this up to level 10? So the first thing that's worth noting is that the higher your quality level is or the more treasure you add into this, the more expensive it gets to actually add things into this. So you see that right now it's a very modest 800 gold. If I add another thing, it's another 800 gold. If I add another thing, it's another 800 gold. So it doesn't get too expensive to do this early on. So really, when you're first starting out, it's the best thing you could possibly do is to put your less expensive treasure into here. The most amount of uh, treasure you can put into this is five at a time. So you see if I try and add another one, it's not going to let me. So let's remove all of these. When you're first starting out at level one with quality one, you want to be trying to put in your lower level treasure. So five of these, for instance. If I put in five priest chalices, it's going to go up a quality level. I'll get some levels. I have a 100% chance, and it's only costing me 4,000 gold to do it. So we're going to go ahead and do that and increase the quality level. And we got a nice quality level. So again, that leveled this up. That's going to increase my rewards. My level is already up to 21, so I'm getting all these stat bonuses by delving. So we're already in a really nice spot. So if we go again, we go five of these. I have a 100% chance, and now you can see this costs 24,000. So for each one of these things I'm adding now, the cost is going up. Each treasure that I'm adding in here is 4,800 at this point. So this is gonna cost a little bit more. Before it was pretty cheap and now it's getting a little more expensive. So again, you wanna be using your lower level treasures initially because the less amount of treasure you can put in here, the less it's going to cost you. So it takes five of these to get it up to 100%. But if I just put in two of these, for instance, it would only cost me 9,600. If I put in five of these, it's gonna cost me 24,000. That sounds like a really nice trade. Why wouldn't I use all of my sacred treasures right away? Well, the reason for this is because it's going to cost a lot. So adding in five treasures once this is quality nine is going to be very, very, very expensive. So the way that you kind of try and mitigate this is while the cost is lower, like right now, you go ahead and you throw in your five priest chalices and you buy it. That'll get your quality level up. And hooray for us. And then we go in there again. And now you can see this is costing 34,000. So before this was 24,000, now it's 34,000. So we're going to add this again. And now our quality level goes up. And the most important thing to be looking at is kind of like where are the bonuses going? So right now I'm at two times souls, two times gold. But if I jump it up to level five, you'll see that I'm getting two times glory. If I jump it up to six, I'm getting three times gold. This is where things start to get more fun. So you'll get an extra delve chest level here at level seven. And then ultimately at level 10, you'll get the third. So my recommendation would be try and get this up to a minimum of seven. Um, ideally, you'd get this to 10. So you just want to go in here and continuously upgrade uh, your chest quality here. So now things are getting a little more expensive. So Genie's Lamps here have a 30% chance. So I could just put in these. Now I have a 90% chance of getting it. This is kind of where you need to play a little game with yourself because if you put treasure in here, like let's just go ahead and throw in this. I have a 5% chance. I'm gonna throw this in here and I'm gonna get essentially nothing for it. I might get a little bit of a level. So you can take some risks. You can go in here and say, well, I'm gonna only donate this and have a 50% chance of doing it. You might hit it, but you're also making it more expensive for yourself if you fail. So realistically, you're trying to do this as efficiently as possible, so you're not wasting your precious gold in here. You want to be doing this as efficiently as possible. So now that we're up to quality level four, we might want to be doing something a little bit heftier. So now this is giving me a 60% chance because I've added these two. And then I'm going to throw in this one, so now I'm up to an 85% chance. And now if I wanted to get this all the way up, I'd do this. But this is not a good idea. So if you noticed, if I take this away, this is an 85% chance. If I'm adding in this treasure, this is gonna take it to 105% chance, but I'm only getting 100% chance here. So this is not an efficient use of your treasure. You wanna be putting together combinations that kind of gets you exactly up to 100%. So four of these, for instance, would get me straight up to 100% chance. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in four of these king's crowns and hit add treasure. Now we're up to quality five. Things are looking fun for us. And now we're going to throw in this one. And as you can see, we're getting more and more expensive. So I've got two genie lamps, so I'm up to 60. 
And now if I throw in two priest chalices, I'm at 100 and I'm gonna get my quality. It's costing me 40,000, so we go ahead and add that. And then we'll do it again. Now we've got that quality seven, it's costing us 48,000. And then we can do it again. We're up to quality eight and it's costing us 56,000. And we can do it again, costing us 63,000. And then finally at this level, things are the most expensive they can be. However, I've been saving my sacred treasure for as long as I can. So now I could just put in one, two, and it's only costing me 34,000 versus how expensive it was being before. I would think we were up to 68 or something like that. So just by donating this, we're going to be able to add this treasure. And now this thing is quality level 10, it's hoard level 95. This delve is ready to go. I'm getting the maximum benefit from a quality perspective. My rewards at the end of this are going to be as high as they possibly can. So my advice when you're going to donate treasure into this is when you're at the lower quality levels, feel free to use these and take a few chances if you want to. You don't have to always make this 100%. You know, you could try and do this at 50. Just remember that every time you fail, you're making it more expensive for yourself to try again in the future. So try and get this number as close to 100% as you can. So I would recommend doing like at least 80%. So that way you have a very favorable chance of doing this. You might save yourself a little gold, but admittedly, getting treasure is not the easiest thing on the planet, especially when you're first starting to delve. So I think it's safer to go for a straight 100% chance. So when you're at the earlier quality levels, use lower quality treasure and more of them. So that way, the less expensive period of time, you're using less expensive treasure to add. Once we're all the way up at this quality level, if I'm trying to add five things into this, it's costing me almost 100,000 gold. So be very cognizant of that as you're going through your treasure. Make sure you're adding this to get this up to the maximum amount of quality using the least amount of treasure that you possibly can do. You're only going to make it more expensive for yourself if you actually just keep dumping stuff in here at lower chances, trying to see if you can sneak this up in quality levels. Invest a little more time, get a little more treasure, and you'll be able to get this up to quality 10 without too much effort. So this brings us to the portal portion of the thing. So if we're looking at the portals again, there's faction troops in here that I want, and they cost chaos shards to do. Uh, I have a decent amount of chaos shards here, so I'm able to open up some portals. So when you go and open up your portals, the things that you can be getting in here again are treasure. And then you can also be getting the actual delve troops themselves. So you can see here that there's four different delve troops available to us. I got three of them in the first pull. And again, these are the only way I can get these troops. I can't get this troop anywhere else except for in this delve. So if there's a troop in here that you actually want, you really do need to invest some time in delves. And there are actually some very nice troops within delves. Again, I would generally recommend you at least get all four of them. You never know when they're gonna be useful. Um, but if you are trying to ascend them up to mythic or something like that, you absolutely would have to go in here and continue doing that. This is also where you're getting your treasure. So as you can see, now that I've pulled the legendary troop in there, I have all four. So I don't need to be opening up any more portals unless I just want more copies of treasure or I want more copies of these troops. Again, that's kind of where you're going to spend your shards. The way that you're getting your shards is in here. So when you jump into the delves and you actually do your delve, at the end of it again, we're getting that reward. So let me show you what that looks like. So when you first open up a delve, uh, it's gonna start at level 20. It'll show you what the board actually looks like. You can go in here and fight as many of these troops as you possibly can to try and get to the boss. Um, it'll tell you what your opportunities are. Uh, unfortunately, as I'm making this video, the actual chest upgrade uh, is busted for this specific event. You'll see that the chest upgrade is 0% and the treasure's at 1x. Uh, that, that's broken right now, unfortunately. But if we do look at the others, you can see uh, this is a 50% chance to upgrade your chest and the treasure within it is going to go 1.3 times. So what this is all about is that you can complete as many of these as you can and it's going to increase the amount of reward you're going to get at it. The reward chest itself will be upgraded and then the treasure within it will be giving you more within that treasure, treasure pool. So when you're going into delves, Ideally, you would be completing every single one of these to get the maximum treasure reward out of this chest. However, you'll know as you get further into it, once your delve is not no longer at level 20 and it's actually at level like 300, level 400, level 450, or even level 500, these fights can be very hard because the enemy team is going to be so much higher level than you. 
So you need to use very specific tactics when you're going through a delve. So when you're first starting out and things are very easy for you, go ahead and complete all of these to get the maximum amount of reward out of this. Uh, the one thing that you do need to be aware of is that it does restrict what kinds of troops you can use. So when you're trying to make your teams for these delves, every delve has a unique combination of two colors that they force you to use. And what that means, of course, is that all of the troops that I'm going to be able to pick, I can only pick troops that have green in them or brown in them. The one caveat that I'll mention is that when it comes to weapons, you are completely unrestricted. So even though this one is only green and brown, I can go ahead and throw in like an Anu Scepter, for instance. I can use whatever weapon color I want. The only restriction is on the troops. So every single troop that you're going to be able to put in here has to be restricted to that specific color for the delve. So when it comes to picking troops that are good for delving, what are some attributes that you want to be looking for? Well, the main thing you want to be looking for is scaling. So what you want to make sure is that whatever troops you're using are going to be able to survive when you're fighting people that are potentially level 500. So there's certain types of troops or certain types of weapons that kind of really, really lend themselves to this. So I'll quickly cover the weapons first. Um, Meng, of course, is going to be the most reliable. It's the one that everyone gets access to. So no matter what level these troops are, you're going to be able to destroy all of the armor that they have and then take all of that armor and turn it into attack. So you can imagine if this person had 300 health and 300 armor, you can just hit them with Meng once and now you have 300 plus attack. So your attack now is doing about on par with what these people are. And of course, if you hit one other person, now you're able to just one shot every single troop you want. So if you're really struggling in a delve, always try and figure out how you can build around Meng. This is probably like the most obvious lower level tactic you could be using. So Meng is of course a very high value weapon when it comes to delving. The other one, of course, uh, are these. So we can jump in here and look at, uh, oh, that's right, because I don't have it, haha, <laughs> trickster shot. So this is similar to Mang in the sense that it's destroying all of the enemy armor. So again, no matter how much they have, it'll destroy all of it. And you're getting that much magic boost at a three to one ratio. So again, if they had 100 armor, you're gonna be gaining about 33 magic. So the next time you shoot your trickster shot, it's gonna be doing that much more damage. So you can imagine as long as you hit them with Trickster Shot a couple times, you're going to start doing some really significant damage. Um, so the Trickster Shot is kind of a magic version of Mang. One of the major benefits of Trickster Shot over Mang is that you don't have to have this in the first slot to be relying on skull damage. You can put this guy in the second, third, fourth slot, it doesn't matter. As long as you can cast Trickster Shot, you'll be doing the benefit there. Um, so this is another high value weapon when it comes to this. Um, and the last one is Earth's Fury, which is doing the same thing. However, the benefit of this is that all of the armor that you're destroying is giving everybody on your team this boost ratio of attack. So Mang was giving it just to your hero at a 1 to 1 boost ratio. Earth's Fury is giving it to everybody on your team on a 3 to 1 boost ratio. So while your hero will be doing less skull damage than the Mang user would be, uh, everybody on your team is going to be hitting like a truck after you cast this like two times, maybe three. So Earth's Fury is another very high value weapon when it comes to delving, absolutely worth uh, looking into. From a troops perspective, what we're really looking for are a couple of unique traits. So from a spell effect perspective, um, devouring is actually extremely important when it comes to delving. And you can probably imagine why. So High King Iron Goat, of course, is like the guy when it comes to delving. And the reason for this is that no matter how strong these troops are, as long as they're not immune to devour, High King Iron Goat is able to just eat them. And then he's super beefy. And then you're able to just devour, devour, devour. Because when you devour this person, you gain all of that attack, which increases your chance to devour to 100% plus. So if you do have High King Iron Gut and you're able to use him in a delve, you should always be using High King Iron Gut. Um, he makes delving that much easier. Absolutely super high value. The other people that you could be using, so Karabos is a very easy devour option. He just has a flat 40% chance to devour people. So if you don't have someone like a High King Iron Gut, you could be relying on somebody like Karabos to do this. Doomclaw also does something similar where he has a chance to devour two people. It's a flat 25% chance to each. Um, this will jump over gaps, so if this guy is dead in the second slot, for instance, and you choose to devour the th uh, attack the third guy, you have a chance to devour the fourth and the first, even though there's a gap here. That's pretty unique. That doesn't work with every single uh, adjacent type ability like this. So Doomclaw is somebody, if you don't have High King Iron Gut, he could be someone that's useful to you. But again, when it comes to just delving in general, this is the type of troop that you're looking for, somebody that could devour. 
The other type of thing that's very useful is actually if we go in here and we sort by transform. So transforming is also a very powerful method of stopping people in delves because if you transform somebody, you change them from this super high level troop to a much lower level troop. So if you're transforming people, this is an extremely valuable way to do it. Um, Possessed King on top of just being an amazing troop in general has a chance to transform three different people. It is a much lower chance to do it. However, basically once you transform somebody, they're much easier to hit. And also a sneaky benefit of transform is that if you're using a troop that devours and the troop that you just transformed was immune to devour, suddenly they're transformed into a troop that is not immune to devour. So you can use transform as a method of forcing people that were immune to devour to suddenly not be immune to devour. So you get two benefits out of transform. You get the benefit of having them being much lower level after you transform them, and you get the benefit of being able to potentially devour them uh, if they weren't before. Another really nice thing here would be uh, lethal damage. So lethal damage is something that can just straight up kill people. So somebody like Scorpius, for instance, as long as you poison them first, and then you cast Scorpius, they're just gonna die. It doesn't matter how much health or armor they have, lethal damage is extremely beneficial. Um, something that's not being shown here that normally is also very good at this would be someone like Megavore. So Megavore is destroying all of the enemy armor, so no, again, no matter how much they have, it's all gone. And then he also just has this 8% chance to just kill the last enemy. So when you're delving, Megavore is also somebody who's really, really high value when it comes to that. So of all those things that I just showed you, um, those are kind of the tips and tricks as far as what kind of troops, what kind of weapons you generally want to be building around when it comes to delves. As far as classes go, the primary ones that you would want to stick with is probably going to be your more defensive classes. So Plague Lord gets access to barriers on browns, which is very important because again, if their attack is 300, you can't be eating a 300 damage attack, you're just gonna die. So somebody that has access to the stone tree, this is going to get you the rock solid trait, which is gonna give you a barrier on brown. So anyone that gets access to that is really a troop that you wanna be running. That will at least give you some way of protecting yourself against the massive amount of damage that they could be doing. So Plague Lord gets that, Rune Priest gets that, Sentinel gets that, and of course, Captain Titan gets that. So my classes that I would strongly recommend would be Titan, um, very, very strong 50% mana start, extra mana generation from the jumbling, uh, very, very nice with that barrier on brown. And the other would really be Sentinel. So Sentinel, again, is kind of like your primary event defensive kind of class. So if you're having struggles trying to get through these delves at the higher levels, um, more often than not, you should be running it with a Titan and or a Sentinel. So those are the troops, weapons, and classes that you generally want to be trying to run when you're going through delves. Something else that's worth noting here is all of this faction info stuff. So when you look in here, this menu looks kind of nuts, right? Like there's a ton of stuff going on, but it's honestly not too, too complicated. So everything on this side of the table is specific to this delve. So all of this faction renown detail is telling you how many points you got for each one of these different things. So based on your treasure hoard level, you'll get some points based on you beating the actual delve with the delve troops that you got. So what this means is that if you're using the troops that you pulled from here only, um, the further you can do that, the more points you get access to. Um, this is just the highest delve that you did without dying. So this is this one. And then this is just what's the best delve, the highest level delve that you ever completed. So all of these points are adding up to your specific faction renown. And what this is telling you is that each faction renown has its own faction reward table. So once you reach this much faction renown for this faction, you'll just get a blanket one-time bonus. So you'll just get three legendary ingots when you get it here, you'll get another three when you get it here, two mythic ingots when you get it here, etc. Uh, what's worth noting is that once you get it all the way down here into the 2000 plus level, you start getting access to the actual uh, pet, which is specific to this faction. So if you really are a pet collector, um, getting all the way down to here is obviously going to be the best. It always gives this team bonus to the actual delve itself. Um, so there's cool little pets you can grab in here. And the only way you can get access to all of these is if you get as many of these up all the way as you can. So you saw that it requires getting 2,500 to get the total amount here. If you add up the total amount in here, it is 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. So you would have to beat the entire delve all the way up to level 500. You would have to do it without dying. 
you can do these all separately, by the way. You don't have to like beat it at 500 without dying using the faction team to get the most points. You just have to beat it at 500 once. You have to beat it once without ever dying. You have to beat it once using only the troops that are within this delve. And then you have to just get your horde up to level 100 plus. So once you've done all of that, you can jump in here to your faction rewards and pull all of these benefits plus the pet and get the pet all the way up to its max level. So that's what all of this side is talking about. When it comes to this side, this is totaling up all of this for every single delve that you have access to. So every single one of these delves down here is specifically trying to uh, have their own faction info. So again, for all of this, so for this faction renown, for the faction renown that we were just looking at for every single one, all of them get added up and that becomes this table. Um, what's nice about this table is that this actually does have some nice benefits. And what's going on in here is that these stat bumps that you're getting access to are for every single troop that you have. So think of them like kingdom bonuses uh, in the overworld area. Uh, every single troop I have has an extra two health and an extra one armor because of how much delving that I've done. So if you are trying to get further in the game, if you're trying to get access to higher level events, get further into events, do better in PvP and Guild Wars, getting these stat bonuses is really the best way to do that. Beyond all of that, you do get extra income per day. So this is going to help your gold increase every single day. And then you also get access to ingots per day. So if you're looking for ingots, of course, delving is the best way to do that. Um, and you can see that when it comes to total renown, all of these has this master uh, level here. So once you get it up to 9,000 across all, for instance, I got access to seven ingots every single day. And then I got more gold, more gold, more ingots every day, more gold, more gold, more ingots every day. But every now and then you do get access to a stat bump. So jumping in here and leveling up your delves, again, is just another way to passively get more ingots, more gold, more stats. Uh, it's very, very important that you do spend some time in delves to level these things up. The stat bonuses are extremely nice, and having access to all the ingots you could possibly want to upgrade your weapons is very nice. So again, when you're looking at this, this is for the specific faction. This is for the total of all factions. Something else of note is that the game has this notion of faction assaults. So whenever there is a new faction release, there's always a faction assault. And then every week at the end of the week, there's always a faction assault for a random delve uh, within it. The nice thing about these faction assaults is that you get access to the shop. So the shop is like every other event shop that you've seen before. You get more sigils to do the event more often. You do get some shards. You do get some extra treasure. So if you are having trouble getting treasure, this is a way you can start to at least get some. Uh, you get a little gold, and then of course you get access to these potions, which makes the fights a little easier. Uh, you can go in here and you can purchase as much as you want. However, I would recommend always getting up to the weapon, and this is the same advice that I give for every single event. Getting up to the weapon is very important because this weapon is something you can only get from this faction, and you only can start to buy this weapon once you actually get a faction assault for that faction. So if there's a really cool faction assault that has a really cool weapon, you can only get it out of this shop when it's available. Since we have so many factions these days, um, this is pretty rare. So like if I don't buy this now, the next time I'd be able to buy this would probably be in like three months. So always make sure you're jumping in and grabbing the weapon for the faction assault. Whether you think you're going to like it or not, it's always worth it. Um, I would hardly, hard, hard, hard recommend making sure you're getting the weapon whenever there's a faction assault. There are a few notable weapons that you can pull out of that. Most notably Jar of Eyes from the All-Seeing Eye. Faction is an extremely high level weapon, um, but again, go in here and grab the weapon whenever there's a faction assault. The other thing that I'll mention about faction assaults is that they always start at the lowest level. So even if I had gotten this kingdom all the way up to level 500, when there's a faction assault event, this is going to start at level 20 no matter what. And then you just run through it like you did as if you were delving. So this mirrors exactly what delving looks like. It's basically just delving very specifically starting over at level 20. However, You'll remember that I had this faction only at level 20. I haven't done anything yet. All of the levels that I'm gaining as part of the faction assault are actually going to level up the kingdom itself. So if I get this faction assault event and I get this all the way up to level 150, let's just say, the next time I jump in to that kingdom and try and do my delves, this is no longer going to say level 20. This is going to say a level 150. So just be careful of that when you're going into the faction assault. You do generally want to get these as high as you possibly can, 
but do take note that if you are doing the faction assault event, you are adding to the levels for your delves. So something to keep in mind. The last thing I'll mention is that there is benefit to leaving a delve at a very low level. So the treasure that you're getting at the end of this is obviously very nice. If you've leveled up your horde to any decent level, no matter what, you're going to be getting a good amount of rewards at the end of the day. I strongly recommend that when you're starting delving, keeping at a minimum one kingdom as low as you can reasonably beat over and over and over again. So if that's only level 20, leave it at level 20. If it's level 40, leave it at level 40. Keep it as low as you possibly can so, and don't ever increase it. So if you look at um, my options, when I look at Adele, for instance, um, it's giving you an option to pick which level this is. If this being level 20 is as good as you can do and it's really hard for you to do level 30, for instance, don't ever pick this one. Just keep it at level 20. And you can just farm this one over and over and over and over again, and you're getting those easy ingots, you're getting that easy gold, the easy glory, the easy shards every single day. So don't take all of these factions all the way up as high as you can possibly go. Um, that's actually hurting the amount of benefit you can get from these. At a minimum, leave one of these at a very comfortable level, so that way you can always dependably get ingots and gold and glory from that specific delve. So again, uh, the faction assault is going to increase this no matter what I do. So if there's a specific faction that you want to leave very low, like let's just pretend that was Primal Rift for me. If there was a faction assault for Primal Rift, it would not be to my benefit to take that any further than the lowest one that I want. Because if I do take that faction assault further, this is now going to permanently be at the furthest level that I got during that faction assault. So again, strongly recommend leaving at least one of these at a very farmable level for you. That's only going to help the income that you have. It'll also make delving very easy for you. You won't hate delving, for instance, because it's so hard once you get them so high. You'll have a very easy place to just go and get all the resources that you're looking for. So that covers everything about delving. So again, it does seem very complicated. Um, however, it is pretty, pretty simple once you get the general gist of it. You go into your delve. You level up the horde as high as you can. You follow the efficiency guide that I gave you at the start of this video. That'll give you the maximum amount of benefit, a lot of stat benefit, all the treasure that you could possibly want. And then you go in and do your delves. You do your delves so you can get your chaos shards. You use your chaos shards to get the troops. And then as you're doing all this, you're getting tons of ingots. You're getting tons of glory. You're getting tons of gold. You're getting all these other benefits from doing it. As you're leveling them all up, you're getting faction renown bonuses, and then you're contributing towards your total renown bonuses, which has global benefits. So that's what delving's all about. It's an extremely valuable place to be gathering resources, but most importantly, it's an extremely important place to be getting ingots. So with the amount of weapons being released in this game, having a very high ingot pool is just going to make sure that whenever a new weapon comes out that you really like, you can immediately level it up as high as you possibly want. Um, so tons of benefit. You get three delves a day. Uh, you can't be doing delves just constantly. So that number of delves here in this corner means how many delves you have left. You can do a delve here, here, and here. You can do three delves here. You can split them up however you want. Again, the only way you can do more than three delves a day is if you actually jump into the faction assault event, assuming one is going on. And then as many of these sigils as you get, you can do as many of those delves as you want. So I hope that gave you everything you need from a delving perspective. Use your money efficiently, uh, use your resources efficiently, use your treasure efficiently. Make sure you're grabbing all the troops out of these and then uh, reap the rewards. So I hope that helped and I will talk to you guys in the next video. See you guys.